Right, golf mates, welcome back to another video. Today is probably a video you are going to understand and you're probably going to have the same problems with me. So we're Simon Edwards here, PGA professional here at Carry Screen in Kendall. Had him on the channel before, he gave us a great lesson, but I always said I'm going to be honest with you. So I've been Scotland and Slovakia. And each day I've been swinging with different swing thoughts yeah. and my head is gone. Yeah. Did a video try and do an half swing. So for a day or two, I played with an half swing. Then that went. Then I would try and play with this three quarter like fade swing. Worked and then that then it didn't work. Yep. Then I went back to your swinging soft. That was nice. Uh, Setting up for a draw fade. I'm really confused and I don't know how to reset, start again. And I think I've consumed too many tips too and lessons. Too much information. I'm a simple lad, and maybe I'm not the person who needs to be overloaded, <laughs> but without being horrible, do you know what I mean? But I'd say, I bet it's a common thing. Yeah. There's that many tips out there. Yeah. And these tips will suit certain people. Correct. But yeah. sometimes tips work without being horrible for a week or two, mm -hmm. and then maybe old habits or the tips, I don't know, they just go away, don't they? Yeah, correct. So a lot of the instruction that's out there is based on what tour players do. Right. In the first instance. Yeah, so we're not good enough, yeah, to do what they do, yeah? But what we've got to always have is to figure out what we can actually do and then what we'd like to do, yeah? Right. So if we have a specific shot pattern and we want to change the shot pattern, there's a real, real simple way of doing it, yeah? And it's all to do with, as we said the last time we spoke together, a lot of it is to do with the arm pressure and what the club face is doing, but then we match the swing shape up to the shot that you want to hit. So what would you say is your natural golf shot? Oh, years ago, maybe before YouTube, a draw. Okay. I hate to say it, it's always still in my head when I set up on a tee or yeah. a shot. But is it my natural shot? I don't know, because my weak shot's like high left to right. Right. I can't answer you, because I don't know if I'm being really honest. Right, so let's find out. So one of the drills that I love to do with someone that figures this out is called the nine shot drill. Okay. So there's nine perfect available ball flights. Yeah. Low fade, mid fade, high fade, low straight, mid straight, high straight, which is the ones you don't want to hit because straight's the most ridiculous shot in the world. Well, being a caddy on tour, yeah. no tour player wants a caddy to say, just hit it straight there. Correct. Because they can't. Correct. Because next time you watch golf on TV and that little curve number comes up in the right hand side of the screen, let me know when it says zero feet because I've never seen it. Yeah. So. What we've got to figure out is what your natural tendencies are with our little nine shot drill. And then we're going to figure out what you actually want to do. So whether you want to draw it or fade it. Or whatever I do more, which I can repeat. Correct. I might not want to do that, but that might suit my swing. 100%. So let's go and hit nine shots. So we're going to try and hit a low fade to start with. And we're having in between the trees. In between the, the trees is fantastic. In between the trees is absolutely perfect. Yeah, so a little low fade to start with. You're not wanting much, are you? Oh, absolutely. Very good. Quite okay. high, okay. Now a mid fade. It's a quick test, this, isn't Absolutely, it? it's huge. And it, this is great because what this does, it shows you what you find easiest to do. Mid fade, beautiful. Now a high fade. High fade. High okay. fade. Very good. That's a great shot. Okay, now low straight. Well, this is where it gets funky. Oh, this, this is one. where it gets real interesting. <laughs> this is where it gets really interesting. Because I always had a question. When you fin them, they go straight. But I don't want the answer to it. <laughs> I stick to what we're doing, Absolutely. but that's for another day. Yeah. So low straight. Right, so your low straight tendency has got a draw on it. That one did, did it? Absolutely. And it didn't go that low either, did it? it? So, so mid straight. So your mid straight's got a draw on it. Okay. And then high straight. High straight, right. It's a fun test, this. It's an it's easy a, test, isn't it's it? It's a real easy test that anybody can do on their driving range at home. Oh, that's got a yeah, fade on it. a little fade on it. So that's why when you aim for straight and people aim down the middle of the fairway or aim at the middle of the green with no idea which way the ball's going to spin, this is where people don't hit enough fairways and don't hit enough greens. Because it's more in hope than expectation that the thing's going to go straight. Yeah. Right. Low draw. Low draw. Low draw. 
Beautiful. Little low draw. Because it kind of is a little mid draw. The handicap's eight, but I kind of see them shots. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you know, at the beginning. I don't know if it's. No, I'm just saying. That's great. Mid draw. Beautiful. Mid draw. High draw. Well, this is where it might get funky. Now, this is going to get really funky. Beautiful. High draw. Is that a draw or a pull? A little pulley, but it was still spinning left. Which of those shots do you find easiest to hit? Fades or draws? I'm struggling to answer that. I think the draw. I'd like yeah. that answer to be fair. Correct, because you actually Well, I see it, so that's a start, isn't it? 100%. But you actually look so much more comfortable and so much more at ease hitting that draw shape. Because the draw is the most natural shot in golf anyway. Yeah, because we know that golf swing, the golf club swung on a circle with a club that's lighter on the toe end, which wants to rotate towards the golf ball. So the perfect spin axis for any golf shot has got to be a draw. Now, 95% of people who play the game slice the ball. Well, the problem is you can cure a slice in 20 minutes. Yeah, as long as you understand how to cure it. It's all about, as we said last time, Liam, is it's understanding what the face does but then understanding what swing shape creates that. So we've got a little practice station we can set up to show you exactly what the correct swing shape is to be able to hit that draw that you find most comfortable on a regular basis. I would find a draw comfortable, definitely. Perfect. So, so do you want to have a look at that? 100%. Brilliant. So what we've always got to realise with a golf swing, and this is where people get really, really confused with this, is they figure out that the golf swing has got something to do with the target line. The golf swing has got nothing to do with the target line. Has it not? Nothing at all. Yeah, because the golf club doesn't swing straight back and straight through. Yeah, it swings on a circle, but it swings on two separate circles to hit a draw. Yeah, so your draw pattern would be as you swing that backwards the club would swing over the pole with the face square to the to the swing plane it would swing under the pole and the face would then rotate closed does that make sense yes so we can see if we go over the pole under the pole the path of the club is coming from inside the target line get you does that make sense yes the face is then closed to the direction of swing, not to the target line. Because people think to hit a draw, it's to the target line. It's not. It's closed to the swing direction. It's open to the target line. Get you. So all we do to hit the draw is we work the club over that pole. We work that club under that pole. And then, as we said to Pete last time, with his four, three, two knuckles, we go from four knuckles to three knuckles to two knuckles. So straight away, that's how you can cure a slice in absolutely no time flat. But this will be the best way for me to be more consistent, saying the, a draw suits my swing. Absolutely. So a draw shape absolutely suits your golf swing because that's what you see. So you have what we call a trajectory window. So you like to see that thing start right and fall left. I do. I always have done. 100%. Always have. I've never said anything different on the channel. But we have to know exactly how we can create that on a regular basis. And this is the easiest way to do it. Okay. Okay. So what I'd like you to do, jump in, please. Set one up. For this ball? Yep. So we're going to go ever so slowly over it. Yep. Now, can you see that club face is 90 degrees to that drill stick? Yes. Now, that's a square club face. A lot of people think that's closed. Yeah? And it's not closed because you can still see the same amount of knuckles at that point that you could see at a dress. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So, if you can see more knuckles going back, one, two, three, four, so that open. club face is open. Yeah. So, that's a club face that's square to the plane. So, if I put a line now from the club face down to the ground, it's pointed at the, the viewers line. can see exactly the same as the stick as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so it's perpendicular to the stick. Yep. Yeah. We'll then work over it. 
Yeah. We then work under it, and now we're going to get Pete to turn the knuckles. Right. Okay, so we're going to do this real slow. Over it, under it, turn it. Have a go, really slowly. And hit it slow. Just a real slow one. And let me know which way this ball spins. Over it, under it, turn it. Which way did the ball spin? That. Right to left. It did, didn't it? 100%. Yeah. That worked right to left. Okay. Because the swing direction was to the right. Yeah. Because the plane was shallower. Okay, yeah. Because what most slicers do, if I can get in and show you, what most slicers do, because they're all inter interested in turning, I want to turn, I want to turn, I want to turn. Turning is the most super dangerous thing in the world. They turn, the club goes under. They've run out of room. They go over and they leave the club face open. I can do that. I suppose we all can, can't we, as an Everybody amateur? can. As a, um, and Are you saying then for an amateur, less turn could be better for you? I'm saying as an amateur, your turn... Is the biggest cock up of your swing? Correct. 100%. Okay, I get you now. Because everybody fixates on turning. And it's your biggest muscle that will take control, won't it? Absolutely. But the problem is you run out of space. So if I've got, if I turn real early, the club goes behind me real quick. Yeah, well, I can't drop it shallow then to hit a draw. See, I'm having a light bulb here. Okay. I think I do that bad as well. Okay. I think I do. Most people do because, if you like, conventional instruction has told us that we need to use our big muscles and we need, need to use this, that, and the We don't. We need to figure out that your rotation comes from the connection of your lead arm. So if your lead arm's connected to your chest going back, the club shaft will hit the toe line I've turned, Get yeah, you. I've not overturned. Get you. Yeah, so if I have rotation through connection, I've then got room to drop it under, start it right and draw it. Yeah. If I work it under and over, look at the path of the club. The path of the club's coming from the outside. Well, That's what am I then gonna do? That's the weak left to right, isn't it? 100, weak left to right goes nowhere, and comes out to the a heel. shank as well, isn't it? Oh, it's incredibly close to a shank. So for the folks at home, this is one of the most brilliant drills. Once they've done the nine shots, and I would hallucinate that most people will find the fade easier to hit than the, than the draw, but they, everybody wants to hit a draw. Because a draw is sexy. But you have said draws better for my swing. Draws the most natural shot. So just, just so people at home can both have this. So let's just say the fade's better for them. Yep. Can we just do something for them? So the fade would be a slightly different path. So the fade would go, you'd aim more left. The fade would go over the pole, over the pole, and left. And the ball starts left and cuts. So then yeah. the same technique would be like a one, pay, one plane then, just stay over? Yeah, absolutely. You see, right. You wouldn't have the shot. you're getting this at home then, if, it, when you do your test, if the fade's best for you, what you hit more, yeah. this is what you want to practice on. Absolutely. It's very simple, isn't it? But everybody loves to hit a draw. Everybody wants to come up and hit that bomb draw. Yeah. The tall players love a fade though, don't the Tall they? players love a fade. This is what I'm saying, that a lot of stuff that we have online and this is where the conflict comes from, is a lot of the, as we said earlier on, a lot of the stuff is based on what tour players do and they're working- On the perfect swing. But they're working on anti-left golf shots. Yeah. They actually don't want to hit it left, so that's why they cut it. Get yeah. We're generally working on anti-right golf shots. Yeah. Yeah, slices. Okay. So when we go opposite orientated and we think to ourselves, well, okay, I want more distance. I want to, I want to draw it. Well, a draw's got to give you more distance here for the average guy because the, the loft on the club face is less than it would be with a fade. Love it. So the ball's going to go further by you hitting a draw. It's going to go lower and it works with every club in the bag because the swing shape's exactly the same. I'm just, I don't know what title we've put, but everything you have said here now, this is the best way to find your natural golf swing. Correct, work. absolutely. Really easy, that, isn't it? But it's also the best way to be able to hit the shot on command. Because if you understand club 
obviously we understand club face with the arms being relaxed, you are one, five and three. Yeah, but all this now, you don't need no swing path, you don't need no data, it's just a bit of 100%. alignment sticks, isn't it? A couple of alignment sticks, a, a, sticks, a swing plate, or you put a, a pole on the ground, whatever. Over it, under it, turn the face to hit a draw. If people ain't got these, could a brolly do? Brolly, anything. Just be really careful when you do it, when you practice, yeah. that you'd start off doing it slowly. Because if you get that going wrong and you catch the stop of the top of that, we'll end up reshafting your golf clubs for you. How good is he? Yeah. So, I'm going to chuck straight back into me. My first finger was saying to like, my half swing, my soft, what just do, any swing, because I don't even know what... Well, it doesn't matter. Because I didn't even have a think about it when I was in the nine ball test. I didn't think about how I just hit the ball. But the, the length of swing, the distance you hit the ball then, is only relative to the length of swing. So if you if you've got a if you hit your wedge 100 yards and you want to fly at 80 yards, just regulate the length of backswing to hit it 80 okay. yards. So I don't want to think about no. that early doors when I said half ah, swing. No. No, I know what I'm swinging. It's a draw and that's it. Correct. It's a draw, but then all you're going to do is say to yourself, well, hang on a minute, I want to hit a half wedge or a half eight iron. We'll figure out that. Okay, it's still the same. You know same what? That could shape. be another lesson going on. Yeah, that perfect. could be because I think that's something I'd like to know. Because once you've got, I think finding a natural golf swing is a start when I'm all confused. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Right. So this time, go over it and under it. Hit me that little draw again. Slow. Or... Yeah, little slow one. Tell me which way it spins. Over it, under it. Turn the face. Which way is it spinning? Right to left. Right to left all day. Brilliant. And again. Over it. Under it. Turn the face. Which way is it spinning? Okay, right Every single left. time. Yeah, you can yeah. feel it, can't you? you? Well, you can see it. Yeah. That's the really cool part. So when you do that correctly, do that again, please. So go over it. And when we come under it, the plane is shallower. Yep. Where's the path got to come from? In. Inside? Yeah. Perfect. But you don't have to think about it, do no. you? Because you've just got to do it, otherwise you're going to hit that. Exactly right. So once we're here and here, and we turn that club face, there's only one shot you can hit. Draw. So your outcome has got to be the same. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Right, now take that away for a sec. Yeah. Now make me a slightly longer golf swing, and I'll give you a little feel coming down. Good. So as you come down now, all you want to feel is your lead arm yeah. Stays connected to your chest until that club hits power. Oh. There you go. Now, See, that feels that's a bit, perfect. But that feels a bit alien, so I mustn't do well, that. Well, it will all. because you'll go inside and over. Mm -hmm. Look at your separation. Yeah, a load of finger magic. Correct. So that's a little number tip. Keep that close to your Keep, move. Just in rows. Yeah. Yeah. So when Rosie does it, his left arm so connected to his chest, club head's got to be behind your hands. Right. Okay. Well, Amen. Like so get to the top and stop. Come halfway down with that left arm connected. Where's that club head relative to your hands? Behind it. It's perfect. Just say, is that good? That's absolutely perfect. Is it? For a draw, that's perfect. Right. Yeah. Then turn the face from there. Very good. Overdraw. Love it. Okay. So this time, don't stop and do it, but do it at half pace. Half pace. So all the way. So go over the pole, under the pole with the left arm connected. There you go, big eye draw. God, I didn't even swing. <laughs> I swear down, I did not even swing. Yep, but that comes back to what we I spoke about I had a little about feeling about keeping this close to my chest. Beautiful. Did you hear the noise though? That was in middle the middle, of wasn't it? Middle of the club face. And your distance will increase, but your shape will be so much more predictable. But it's like where I said, no, no, I've got back to that reset of my golf swing. Now, draw, exactly. it's just, I've got a nice, clear mind. It's clarity. Yeah, yeah that's a good way. You have clarity. So go over the pole. So feel the visual as you're doing it. Loop it under the pole, then turn the face. Big high draw. Yeah. Mm. And the strike again was brilliant. Crazy. Though. Over the pole. Under the pole. Beautiful. Yeah, that work. 
That, that was, was the pure. One that was. That I was even pure. thinking of a target then. I was, first time, but then I was thinking, right, let's get it through the goalpost. Perfect. Because I forgot about that. That was that was nice. That. But again, though, Simon. Effortless. No, I weren't trying. I don't know. We were like. We spoke last time about the effortless power as opposed to powerful effort. It's the first time I feel the club face going whack. Yeah. Whack. Yeah. So without me trying to do much. But think about it that if that club face, you let it do what it wants, which way is it going to rotate? Oh, you want it, doesn't it? Club, well, that's, doesn't a, it? that's draw pattern, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? Where most people get this wrong because they're trying to hit it straight is this stop in that toe turning. Well, where's the club face now? Okay. Where's the ball going to go? Right. Has to. Okay, so your visual is to go over the pole, under the pole, and then turn the face. Oh. Brilliant. Now that's pure, because that's a little baby draw. Yeah. Yeah. That's going way past the 150. That's Correct. the range balls, that. Come on. Over it. Under it. Turn the face. That. How about that? I mean, that was the best. That, that was even better. 100%. That. So the more you get used to the pattern, yeah, and the more you rehearse it, and the one thing, can I just jump in and show you something? 100%. One of, if I'm loving this, everyone at home's <laughs> loving this. Hopefully everybody at home's loving this. Can I stop you, Simon? Yeah. If you want a lesson with Simon, how can they do that if they can't get to Caris Green? So if they can't get up to Caris Green, I have a thing called a Skillist account, which we're going to post in, in, the, uh, in the video. So we can do online online lessons. So you'll send me a video and I'll analyze it and send you back all the drills. Well, just pop one up there because you've had some great feedback. I'm telling you, Simon is old school without being disrespectful. 100%. We might as well get the elephant out of the room. Oh, correct. 100%. And he's not Ric Flair from the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not got as much money as Ric Flair. <laughs> but he's old school and he's class. I, lo I love this. Hopefully you give him some love. Right, Simon, back to lesson. We're all you sorted now. So what we're really, really, really thinking about is I just got through reading a great book called Relentless by a guy called Tim Grover. And he talks about the idea that any improvement in motor skill performance can only be relative to how precisely you practice yes so what i'm saying to you is put your drill sticks in the ground and practice with them and practice the position here the position here and the position here so we call that p2 shaft parallel going back p6 shaft parallel coming down p7 impact yeah so two six Seven has to give you that little baby push draw. Can, can I just? I want to ask you a question now. While yep. you're there, so you've just practiced slow, slow, slow. Yeah. Would that be more beneficial for an amateur than practicing full? Hundred percent. You can't change anything at full pace. Th that, that's so, the gold. That's the gold. Golden thought, rule. That, that's the nugget. Golden rule. Because you watch tour players, and I'm very lucky with my Legends tour players and my LET tour players, that. And my, all my other guys and girls that I, I've got the privilege to help is we'll spend hours rehearsing the moves. But you can get it right easier, slower. Absolutely. Does that what, make sense? I'm loving it. What I am going to say, Simon, we're going to wrap it up there. Yep. Because I think we've got time. We're going to do a, another video on driver swings, you said, which yep, is going to be absolutely. great. Absolutely. But listen, golf mates, thank you to Simon massively at Caris Green. Don't forget. Give Simon a follow on his social media going across. And if you want a lesson, you can't get to Carry Screen. He's told you how to do it. Simon, I can't wait to get practicing. More importantly, I can't wait to get on the course. And hopefully, I don't chicken out and I just see what I'm practicing. See, absolutely. See that big bomb draw. Well done, bud. Cheers.